Good morning, friends. Welcome to week four. This is not how I wanted to end our time together. Darn. But since this is the way we're learning, I encourage you to watch all the videos I provide each week because your check for understanding is going to have questions about each video. And they might be near the end of the video. <sighs> so, yes, I'm being tricky. This is me being a teacher being tricky. Uh -huh. Today's lesson is going to review the line notes of the bass and the treble clef. And if you'll notice behind me, set up on my own piano, is a chart with a bass clef and a treble clef. And these green arrows, can you see what they say? They say, look here first. Because if we don't take note of whether it is a bass clef or a treble clef, we may be playing the wrong notes. That's where the idea of a wrong note comes in. If you play something that the composer hasn't written, that's where the idea of a wrong note comes in. And so we want to learn exactly what they are, what to push, and for how long. Okay, let's begin, please, with the line notes of the bass clef, which we just did last week. Most of you did awesome on your check for understanding, so thank you so much for watching the video before you tried it. And if you didn't do quite so awesome, this is your week to get it in your head. Notice that I have a string taped from each note down to its actual note on the piano. This is one thing we can't do in the classroom because the keyboard is facing away from you. And it would take our entire class time to invite each one of you up one by one to see what I'm doing. So this actually works better for this. Oops. All right, so we begin on the first line. First line is always the bottom line, remember? The first line is grandma or G. We follow the string down. And it's always that G on the piano. Always. All right. We go up to line two, boogies, B. Third line, down, D. Fourth line, F. Fifth. Fifth line, avenue. Grandma boogies down. G, E, D, F, A. Easy peasy. Now, I don't know if you can see it very well, but each one of these notes skips one of the white notes to get to the next one that we want. Why is that? Because we're leaving the space notes out of this one, aren't we? And so on the piano, it goes line, space, line, space, line, space. It's very, very orderly. You can always figure things out that way as well. Okay, Grandma boogies down Fifth Avenue. Grandma boogies down Fifth Avenue. Very good. Now, this top note, you may be wondering, there was a question about it in our last quiz. It is middle C, as it is written for the bass clef. Middle C can be written both for the bass clef, which would assume that our left hand would be playing it. If it's written for the bass clef, it's up above. It's still lonely, it's still on its own little line, but it's up above, okay? Still middle C. So there's a string headed right down to middle C. Middle C, singing middle C. That's what it looks like when it's written for the bass clef. But let's trudge over here to the treble clef. What do we have here? This is a middle C written for the treble clef. If it's written to be played by the right hand or sung by women's voices, it's going to be below the treble clef. Still on its own line. It's still very lonely. And it's still the same middle C. Okay? So these middle notes here, middle C, can be written for the bass or the treble clef. Okay, something a little interesting. Let's begin with our first line. 
empty. Empty. Garbage. Before. Dad. Flips. Empty. Garbage. Before. Dad. Flips. Always remembering, when I ask you for the first line, it means the bottom line, doesn't it? Okay, typically we start at the top and count down, but in music, we start at the bottom and count up. So if I ask you for the second line of the treble clef, you're going to count one, two, and get to a G. Garbage. If I ask you for the fourth line, you're going to count one, two, three, four, and get to a D for dad. All right. Good job. Please watch these videos as often as you need to. I miss you. Hope you're well. Bye-bye.